Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamond, and we are the scouting staff for the Hula Bowl. This interview is sponsored by the Caribe Royale Orlando, which is the title sponsor for this year's Hula Bowl. The Caribe Royale Orlando is a luxury resort just a few miles outside of Walt Disney World Orlando. Uh, they offer lavish accommodations, relaxing pools, massive ballrooms, several dining options, and more. Book your dream vacation at CaribRoyale.com now. Uh, today I have with me uh, Juwan Briggs. He is a defensive lineman out of Cincinnati and one of this season's uh, best prospects on the defensive line. So uh, nice to have you, buddy. It's nice to be here. Yeah, sorry about that long spiel of, of things I got to say, man, but uh, it is a very nice resort. Um, and uh, believe it or not, um, you'll have the opportunity to experience that because we invited you down to Orlando for the Hula Bowl. So I uh, wanted to let people know that, or we felt that uh, obviously great talent. Um, the way I kind of want to describe you to a lot of people is you're a renaissance man. You can do so much um, on, you know, on the field, off the field, um, you know, very, very strong, explosive, uh, you, you know, player. So, uh, but I want to give you a chance to talk, man. Give us a little bit of your background. Uh, tell me where you're from and we'll go from there. Yeah, so Juwan Briggs, um, one of six. So I have four older sisters, one younger brother. Um, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Grew up here pretty much all my life. Went off to college at Virginia for my first year and a half and returned here to Cincinnati. Now I live with currently my wife and my three children. So, you know, we're just, you know, excited to get on this ride and see what, you know, April has to come for us. I'm really excited to play in this game. Cool. Well, um, kind of wanted to backtrack talk a little bit about you know um all of that transitioning early on and again like you, like you said you started your collegiate journey at uh, virginia but before you got there man you were at walnut hills high school there in cincinnati um fondest memories man i mean obviously high school is, is what it is but uh, share with me some of your fondest memories as an athlete there um fondest memories in high school I would probably say one of my fondest memories had to be, you know, of course, the connections made there. Um, but really, in high school, I tried to make sure I had my hands in a little bit of everything, not just sports and, you know, academics. Walnut Hills being one of the top academic schools in the country, you know, of course, you're going to have your hands in academics. But, you know, I tried to reach out in a little bit of everything. And I actually found myself in, uh, you know, choir and doing a whole bunch of different musical theater. So my fondest memory, I'd say, would be during one of the year's productions, I was the lead male actor in a musical called Ragtime. Uh, we ended up winning a bunch of awards for it. And uh, I actually won uh, Best Male Lead that year. So that award is sitting somewhere with my parents in their trophy case. And, you know, it was one of my highlights of my uh, high school career, I could say. Awesome. Um, and then obvi obviously played some football, um, also participated in some track and field as a thrower. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what are some of the accomplishments you had early on? Uh, as far as sports? Yeah. Yeah. So um, on the football side of things, of course, I mean, I pretty much played seventh grade. I mean, played seventh grade. Walnut Hill starts in seventh grade. So I played seventh grade. But in seventh grade, I played on the eighth grade team. Didn't play eighth grade because I wanted to work out a lot. Played freshman ball with the freshman team. And then from 10th up, I was on, you know, the varsity team making my way. So after my freshman year, uh, a bunch of the guys got a, pretty much got on a bus and went up to Miami of Ohio. And that's where I got my first scholarship offer. I'll never forget. Uh, it was prior to my, it was that sophomore season. So that kind of you know, got my mind thinking that, okay, maybe football is something that could, you know, pay bills, put money on the table, and, you know, above all, allow for me to get a free education. So I decided to delve into that and, you know, put my all into that. Now, along the same lines, I also did a bunch of, you know, different other sports. I trained for wrestling. I ended up training and trying to do baseball. Neither of those panned out, but I found myself in a uh, track and field. So, I ended up doing shot put and discus throughout all of high school. 
Um, I actually didn't have a coach my senior year or my freshman year. So I ended up having to pretty much coach uh, the boys and girl throwers, you know, make sure they're well teaching them whatever I knew. So I knew a bit of technique just from my one year of being a coach, but that actually allowed me to make it to state in the state finals in my senior year. It allowed me to place in the state finals in discus. So, you know, I couldn't have been, couldn't have been that bad of a coach, but you know, it was a lot of fun and, you know, it was a great leadership opportunity in that sense uh, or from a young age. Nice. And and you said you started to get some, uh, you know, offers early on in football, um, obviously that being uh, Miami of Ohio first. And then um, I'm sure you had a lot of others along the way, but dude, you ultimately landed there at UVA. Um, talk about that experience, man. How'd that recruiting go for you and, and how'd you get there to Virginia? No, it was awesome. I mean, my main thing for picking a school was top-notch academics, um, you know, a great football program with great people around it that actually care. And then, you know, the final thing was the opportunity for me to, you know, do what I love doing, being eclectic, being able to reach my hands out and do different things. So once, you know, UVA, once I went and visited UVA and, you know, kept basically scouting them out, you know, I figured that they pretty much were, you know, called a public Ivy, quote unquote, on par with, you know, your Notre Dames, your Stanford's when it came to academics. And also the program that I want to go into was one of the top in the nation, which at the time was computer programming. So that was there. Uh, the coaching staff was great. Of course, you know, I have nothing but praise and nothing but great things to say about the coaching staff that was there when I was getting recruited. They were great people, still are great people, of course. And, um, Finally, you know, being able to do a little bit of everything, I actually ended up, as soon as I got there, I ended up joining two choral groups. Um, one was the, you know, university cho university cho chorale. So I sang there, you know, we sang in concerts. I actually sang a concert before one of my Duke football games um, my freshman year. Um, so that was fun. Or my sophomore year, so that was fun. And then I also was in the sort of advanced choral group that went and performed, uh, you know, it was about, I think, maybe 20 of us that went and performed at different events around campus and different events around Charlottesville, you know, kind of like, I don't know, it was kind of like a small, you know, chorus that just went to go and perform in different spots. And that was also a lot of fun. Now, those were the sort of uh, professional, I'd say, choirs, more through the college and, you know, things like that. I also was able to, you know, join or audition and join um, this acapella group called the Hullabahoos. Now, most people don't know, but in UVA, acapella is kind of like the the lifeblood of the underground singing, underground musical thing there. And uh, actually, a lot of the movie Pitch Perfect is based off of what was going on at UVA. Nice. So I ended up joining this acapella group called Hullabahoos. I'm technically still in it I'm just not at UVA and uh you know we had a lot of fun we pretty much went on tour throughout the whole uh off season for me so spring we went on tour um I was luckily lucky enough to be a part of the hullabahoos when we went on tour overseas so we actually went and toured in London we performed in London at a bunch of different places a couple of different schools a couple of different halls a couple of different churches and uh you know just overall enjoyed the trip out there so you know, I think going to UVA and being able to experience all those things is something that I will never, ever regret. I think it was one of the best best times to, you know, leave an impact on myself by going out and doing all that. Cool. Well, um, to want all that stuff sounds uh, a lot like a lot of fun. Um, you know, uh, again, I kind of introduced you as what I would call a renaissance man like you could do so many different things man i mean very talented again with uh music and all um you, you had shared all about that um i have in my notes that you you actually also obtained a degree in in physics is that true no so my degree is in physics and music oh okay. at uva i was a double major of physics and music but when i transferred you know, UC basically said, well, if you want to keep your double major, you'll basically have to add two years, a year and a half onto your program, which, you know, being a college football player, you know, I was thinking four years and get out of there. Yeah. So that wouldn't have been able to happen. I didn't have six years to spare. 
So but, but I decided to change music, my basically. I mean, I, I had I got that wrong. I didn't get <laughs> in music in there, but uh, no, that's that's fine, man. I just kind of want to clarify that. Um, yeah, buddy, let's let's shift gears because I mean, I want to talk to you, uh, talk about you more as a football player, if you don't mind, because mm-hmm. obviously, uh, that's the framework that we're uh, you know, connecting with, and obviously, you want to try and get to the next level, so um. Defensive lineman, a uh, guy who's been been used in multiple ways, man. Um, talk about how you've been used uh, overall, like in your um, in, in your career. I mean, where are you lining up? What do you feel is like your your best attributes? Uh, give me a feel for that. Yeah, so I've literally played every position on the D line. I have coverage snaps as well, driving back in coverage, um, and yeah, that's pretty much. That pretty much covers that. I've literally played every single position. And to add on to that, I've played every single position at an above proficient rate. You know, the numbers I've posted throughout the years are above the average or above pretty much any other person playing that position, especially for me. Now, you said how I felt, you know, playing in those positions. Obviously, me being six one and a half, six two, you know, three ten you're probably not going to see me as your prototypical edge rusher. And, you know, I, I believe that. <laughs> I'd much rather have my hand down playing a zero, one, two, or three tech, or maybe even a, you know, four, a head up four tech. Um, and just being able to put hands to a man immediately, you know, absorb double teams and play off of that. Pretty much interior D line is where I would play. But of course, you know, I have tape playing anywhere. So I'll do literally, I'll do what's asked of me, you know, and I'll do it at a, at a high clip, as my coach would say. No, I get you. Um, once upon a time, one of our scouts did mention, um, again, just reading what uh, one of our guys had said, um, very effective pass rusher, good initial quickness, solid use of hands, and probably one of the best bull rushes you've ever seen on a guy. Because, I mean, we're looking at a guy who uh, is very strong. I know uh, early this season you were named to the Bruce Feldman's freak list. Uh, because we're looking at a guy who can squat 700 pounds, bench press over 450 pounds. I mean, uh, how does it feel to get uh, that sort of notoriety as one of these freaks out there? <laughs> no, it feels great. You know, one thing I take pride in is separating myself, you know, as far as or separate myself from others in a lot of different ways of course you know we talk about all the music and stuff i did like that but when it comes down to it you have to be able to separate yourself physically you know i take a lot of pride in making sure physically i'm able to outperform or you know even aesthetically look better than you know the others that are around me just because that's the natural competitor in me so when you look at a d lineman you say well we got one guy here the six two three ten we got another guy the six two three ten I can promise you that the guy that's 6'2", 3'10", that is not me, is not looking like me and is not moving the weight or moving as fast as me. And I take a lot of pride in that, you know, and I don't mean to sound pompous in any way, but, you know, that's just something that kind of motivates me as well. Hey, you know, uh, the way this sport is, man, you kind of have to have a little bit of swag to yourself. It's okay. It's it's okay (laughs) to use that. I mean, because, you know, you get that out there on the field. I mean, you make a great play. I mean, you got to, you know, got to celebrate a little bit and it, it, it's fine it's fine mm-hmm. for you to it's fine for you to have that swag it's, it's all it's all good as long as you don't draw a penalty um but uh uh all right well um let's talk about cincinnati man i mean um you know you get to cincinnati uh named first team all conference last year and then a lot's changing this year man you guys are moving to a to a new conference a new new set of uh opponents um Talk about that development over your time there at Cincinnati, man, and, like, you know, how that helped you develop as a player. No, I think it helped me develop a lot. You know, my first year getting there, I had pretty much worked my way into a starting position, start towards the end of the season. That was the playoff season. Um, Ended fairly well there, you know, pretty – I think I led the D-line in tackles next next to my guy, Curtis Brooks, who's with the commanders right now. Um, and, uh, so that went pretty well. I'd say the next season, as you said, was when I was all conference, led the D line and tackles again, 
And, you know, of course, numbers are fine and all, but I think it was just the ability to kind of shift throughout the D-line and be able to learn not only the defensive line, but learn the defense as a whole and basically learn, you know, two separate defenses. Defensive. I mean, you know, counting Virginia, I've learned three different playbooks. And uh, from the top down, I'd like to know, you know, why I like, you know, if my job is to be in the B gap, I kind of want to know why am I in the B gap? Who's in the C gap? Who's behind me? You know, who's the final fitter? Because at the end of the day, if I know what's going on, I could then play fast. And that's how I think people should look at football. So those years at UC really helped solidify that from an IQ standpoint. You know, first year getting in there, getting my feet wet in the new defense, being able to move and shake a bit, then moving a position to play nose. So now I know what the DNs are doing. And I know what the linebackers are doing, you know, learning that and making, you know, being able to basically kind of be one of the guys, other guys on the field can turn to and say, Juwan, what am I doing? You know, we're mid-play, Riggsy, where am I going? You know, and just being able to do that helps things run smoother and helps guys play fast. Going into this year, you know, as soon as the coaches got in in January, I was in the office every single day with them, staff meetings, learning the defense, top to bottom, asking where the safety's fitting, asking, is this a cover two concept? Asking, you know, am I dropping here? Am I rushing? You know, what are we doing here? You know, should I call a game here? And, uh, you know, that just really allowed for me to develop as uh, more of a cerebral football player, I'd say. Gotcha. Well, um, and again, as I had mentioned, I mean, um, you guys are you moved to a new conference this year. Um, and so um, the thing is, man, is, you know, you you did well for yourself this season, but you're also surrounded by a lot of great talent, man. I mean. Uh, talk about some of your teammates, man. Let's just, let's just give them a shout out real quick. Yeah. So specifically on the defensive side, I mean, the whole D line room is pretty much stacked with guys that were productive from top to bottom. You know, we got guys like Malik, who's actually, you know, he's getting ready to train as well. Malik Van, you got Eric Phillips, uh, pretty much all around rusher. Dante Corleone, of course, the guy, big guy in the middle along with, you know, Wadley, Justin Wadley, another DN we got, Rob Jackson getting his feet wet, you know, Dominique Perry, you know, and Derek Shepard and Jalen Hunt. I mean, our D-line was pretty much the most, I'd say it was one of the deep, it was probably the deepest room we had on the on the team for that year. And I think a lot of guys would agree with that. And it was also the most experienced room. And that just came from, you know, a leadership perspective with, you know, me, Leek, Eric, you know, court Dante from the top to bottom and, you know, just really having that kind of no BS attitude for anybody in the room and just really holding each other accountable throughout the years. Cool. Well, um, you know, again, spending time at Virginia and also there at Cincy, I know you've had a lot of great moments, a lot of great memories, games, plays. Um, share maybe one of your favorites that you've been a part of. I mean, whether that be uh, – tackles, fumbles, you know, whatever, you know, some moment in a game, man. Just give me, like, one of your best uh, memories. My best memory for Virginia, I would say my freshman year, um, I had already gotten, I think, 20 tackles or something like that, but I hadn't gotten a sack yet. And I was a, I was a true freshman starter. And, you know, I'm like, man, I got to get a sack. I got to get a sack. You know, so finally – you know, we go and play UNC, which was a, it was a highly ranked team at that time. Uh, that was 2019. I think they had Sam Howell at quarterback. More than I don't know who they had at quarterback. They had a guy. That's all I know. So, you know, we go to play them or whatever. And uh, it was literally the first play of the game. You know, I just literally took the center, got him with a one-hand stab, and drove him literally straight into the quarterback. The quarterback tried to get away. I got the center in one hand. I got the quarterback in the other hand. And, you know, that happened to be my first sack of my collegiate career. And, you know, it was a beautiful moment. I was definitely, you know, happy it happened, finally. I didn't want to end my season without a sack. So, you know, that was probably the most fun moment I have from UVA right there. And what about Cincy? I don't know, Cincinnati? Uh, there are a couple. Um, I well, could probably – Well, give me one. Yeah, there are a couple, actually. So my first one would probably be the uh, Houston Conference Championship. 
Um, we're pretty much trying to seal out our win. They got the ball on their minus, I think I forget, minus whatever, minus 30 or something. It's third down or second down. So we're trying to get, you know, something to get them behind the chains. Um, I get off rushing from a four tech, you know, so that's already fairly unorthodox. <laughs> I get off the ball, you know, I go with a power move. I extend my hands on the guard, on the tackle. Um, he decides to drop his weight, pulls outside shoulder, arm over, uh, turn the corner and then sack right there to pretty much finish the drive. That would be my first one. And uh, I'd say my second one would probably be from second would probably be from uh what was that last year yeah definitely last year it was during the arkansas game um it was one of the fir first couple reps or something i literally my job was pretty much that play just a two gap uh, i took the center extended them Look that way, court running back came to me. So, of course, you know, when the quarterback presses the hole and you're looking right at him, he's going to wait for you to go that way. He's going to go another gap. I knew that. We waited for him to press, threw the center away, got the tackle right there. That'll be from last year. And then from this year, it would have to be uh, my call to play on the D-line. We were allowed to call different types of stunts. Got the uh, front shifted over. And... uh you know, the team was running a Titan or a dark play, tackle pull play around. So after shifting the front, I started at 404, I shifted to a three tech. So the guard decided to kind of give me a shoulder shrug or a shoulder shiver and then work up straight to our backer. So like I said, this is a dark play, a tackle pull. So the tackle just, you know, hop skips and goes to pull. I'm pretty much unblocked on the path to the court to the running back. I pretty much take the tackle, put him. I mean, I knock him into the running back. He knock, he knocks the running back down. He knocks himself out. And uh, that'd probably be my best one from this year, I'd say. Awesome. Well, uh, I think it's great, man, just kind of reminiscing about all these great memories. I mean, um, you've already shared so much about, like, your uh, other things that you've done, like, off the, off the football field uh, as well, like, uh, with, with all of your musical talents and such. But... Um, is there anything else about you, like outside of what you've already mentioned, that um, you want to share with people? Um, I mean, you know, besides that, I mean, you know, I'm a husband, I'm a father of three, so there's that. Yeah. Um, I read and, somewhere yeah, I mean, you play a few different instruments too. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah, I play some instruments. Uh, I don't play them as much now as I used to. You know, my kids kind of broken my uh they broke my electric guitar so i can't really play that one i got a bass upstairs i'm looking at my viola right now there's a saxophone lying around um there's plenty of little pianos we have even for the kids so you know it's kind of i kind of it's a it's a cacophony in here sometime with all the noise and music that could be going on but it's one that i enjoy so with for for a guy who with uh all these musical gifts and talents like who do you listen to? Like who what, who are some of your go-tos? Like when you when you're listening to me. Well, I say one of my go-tos, honestly, it would have to be, and it really depends on the mood, but one of my go-tos would probably be, I'd say, you know, Prince, just because he's an overall musician. Andre 3000, you know, most people know him as a rapper, but he actually is a overall musician as well, makes all types of music. Hmm. Um, you know, I like old school music as well. So, you know, the Ain't ice cubes, the all types of stuff like that. And, you know, I honestly, you know, it's hard to say, but I pretty much listen. I literally listen to everything. All right. So, well, you know, um, it's really me, just the mood. Let, let me give you another, though. I mean, uh, let's say uh, you have, a, I mean, I know you, you're busy right now. You got a wife and kids and a lot going on. But let's just say for the sake of argument that we're going to have a karaoke night, man. I mean, what's that one song that you're going to... Um, always sing for people mm. uh i'll probably say there are a couple it could be uh either purple rain by prince or i'd say cry for you by jodeci um he's old school man people forget about I so, that's the only thing i'm trying to think of something uh modern no that's fine uh, 
for me, I can appreciate it because I'm an older guy. Uh, but I think a lot of these uh, young guys, like they don't know, they don't know what what that stuff is. But uh, surprisingly, I do. Um, well, hey man, we've been uh, talking now for a while. Um, if you want to wrap up our time again, um, a player who we have invited to come down to the, the Hula Bowl, which is on January 13th. That's going to be, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be on CBS Sports, so people are going to be able to, you know, to watch that. Um, but dude, I mean. You're going to have the opportunity of a lifetime to sit down with a whole bunch of scouts, have all those interviews with all 32 NFL teams, um, and just want to kind of give people a preview, man. Like, what kind of a player would they be getting if they took a chance on you, signed you, draft you? What would you bring to their franchise? So uh, go ahead and close us with that. I'd say you're going to get a you're going to get a high IQ leader that has the power, quickness and strength, you know, to put that IQ to use wherever you need any position on the yeah. D-line, of course. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I mean, unless we want to, you know, throw you out there like on a on a goal line stance or something, man, I and mean, maybe make you a fullback. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could do that in a pinch if somebody asked. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I did say. Like, I mean, this year I've got tape of – I think I've got a pancake every single time we they've put us in there on the jumbo package. Hey, why not, man? I mean, I, I think it. I think it works. Let's do it. Um, but no, Juwan. I mean, I think that there that there's a lot that you offer. I mean, again, like you said, I mean, um, just being able to learn several defenses over your, you know, over your time, uh, you know, there at UVA and there also at Cincinnati, and then of course, um, a guy who has, uh, let's just face it, man, freakish strength. Uh, that's you. You can't knocked out at all leadership qualities and such i mean that stem from uh really a lifetime of uh, being a quality leader very mature man uh who uh is a professional and is ready to go uh as a football player so i want to wish you sure. best of luck and uh hope to see you in orlando very soon yes sir thank you no problem once again juan briggs defensive lineman cincinnati uh check this guy out